Welcome to this special edition of the Commissioner's Report. It's special because we're being joined today by Polk County Commissioner John Hall, Polk County Property Appraiser Marsha Fox, and because we're filming at the beautiful new Florida Polytechnic University, which opens for classes this August. Welcome to the program, Commissioner John Hall. It's good to be here. Thank you very much. I wanted to uh, read a quote from the architect of this beautiful facility, Santiago Calatrava. He says, my first aim is to make an inspirational environment for the students, the professors, and everyone working here. I want them to feel that the day, the building, and the world are full of opportunities. As a longtime resident of Polk County and certainly as a county commissioner, you've got to be absolutely thrilled with the Florida Polytechnic coming to life on what used to be fallow ground on Interstate 4. I am thrilled that it's here. It's, um, you know, it's the Florida's 12th uh, university and um, I just can't uh, say how much of an economic impact it's going to be over the next uh, decades. Uh, you know, you hear people say that it's going to have an economic impact and, and uh, you get the thought that it's going to be immediate. But it's not. No, sir. We're not talking about five or 10 years. We're talking about 25 and 30 years. The fact that we're going to be able to keep some of our youngest and brightest minds in Polk County, uh, the fact that we're going to be uh, actually acting as a magnet for some of those bright minds uh, that will come here and hopefully stay and the businesses that it will uh, attract and generate. How important is that? You know, the Williams Company, Companies of Tulsa, Oklahoma donated 535 acres to this project uh, and they have a mixed use development of regional impact adjacent to this campus, but a lot of money went into this ground before we had our groundbreaking. Yes, it did. Um, you know, not only the Williams Company's uh, donation, but the county put in uh, 25 million uh, to build the infrastructure. And, and when you hear that, and when people hear that, uh, I want them to understand that uh, that $25 million wasn't just for the Polytechnic campus, that is for the Williams DRI. Uh, that is for the Ruthven's uh, Commercial Park. Yes, sir. I mean, there's uh, the, uh, the boulevard out here it uh, is the northern boundary of the Central Polk CRA. So there's a lot of commercial activity that is, is just waiting to happen as our economy comes back. Uh, and hopefully this is going to be one of the generators of that uh, commercial activity. You know, you're talking about money. I think a total of 250 million in federal, state, and local dollars have been spent to get us to where we are today with the university. Uh, part of that was in University Boulevard, mm -hmm. the Pace Road interchange, and don't we have a new project on Berkeley Road? Could you explain what, what's happening there? Well, we have a, uh, it's, to me, it's a fantastic new uh, project that's uh, already been voted on by the Board of County Commissioners to move forward with it. It's, uh, I think, 11.7 million. Uh, it is the four-laning from Pace Road uh, to just north of the Auburndale Cutoff, which is also 559A. And then it's the four laning of 559A over to 559. And uh, then the state is actually going to be uh, um, undergoing a intersection revision up at um, I-4 and 559 and bringing four laning down to where we're going to uh, stop off. So uh, we will be able to do a lot of things as far as traffic uh, with those four laning projects. Uh, the main thing is taking a lot of the truck traffic off of the downtown Auburndale area yes, because sir. now we will have four lanes around uh, the Auburndale area. So um, we're, uh, we're really excited about uh, that uh, and it finishing up. You know, the travelers on I-4 uh, as, they're, as they're heading out on the big interstate, they, tur they turn and they see this beautiful uh, main building, if you will, at, here at Florida Polytechnic, and they do double takes. They can't believe what they're seeing, but there's much more than just beautiful architecture going on here. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, I believe it's 160,000 square feet that's going to mm -hmm. be uh, classrooms, instruction areas, mm -hmm. uh, uh, faculty uh, area, and um, it is uh, iconic. 
to yes. say the least. I mean, people that see it are going to remember it. And um, it's going to be the, the center uh, of, of the campus. And it's, um, it's done by an architect that had a vision in mind to, to have something that would be uh, memorable. And along with the, uh, the main building, of course, we have the new wellness center under construction and the new dormitory, which I understand is going to be open for uh, classes when, when um, uh, they open the, the campus in, in August. That's pretty amazing. Things haven't changed since we, when we were going to school. <laughs> the students still want to live in a dorm if they can, if they can get close. If they can get close, and uh, this is going to be an absolutely beautiful uh, setting for, for students to, to be in. Uh, I think that uh, the new dorm has uh, 219 uh, different Rooms. rooms. Yes, and uh, it's, um, it's a really nice uh, facility, nice structure. Uh, students, uh, we've already, uh, as I understand it, got our, our starting class uh, filled, and, and uh, there's a lot of excitement there. Uh, so uh, I believe that we're going to, to move forward and, and it's going to have not only, again, a, a positive economic impact, it's going to have a, a positive impact on a lot of people's lives. You know, a year ago during a planning meeting for this university, I mentioned that this could be Polk County Sputnik moment, meaning that it could really advance technology uh, and science in our community and beyond. I know you agree with that because you right. you agree that we need to promote what's called STEM. What's STEM? Uh, STEM is a science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, as, as far as all of the disciplines go uh, in um, a curriculum. Uh, and uh, the, this is going to focus on those, uh, not the arts. This is going to focus on the technology side of education. And I think that uh, with the, um, again, the, the young and bright minds that, that want to be engineers or want to be doing something as far as innovation and technology, this will be the place to come. Uh, and uh, we've got a lot of polytechnic universities around the nation, right? and or technology, uh, MIT, uh, Cal Poly, you know, so it's, uh, and people hear those names and they understand exactly where they are. That's where we're going to be a few years from now. Um, the campus, though it's, uh, it's finishing up and will be ready this summer, uh, not quite ready to go into the, innovative, uh, the Innovation Science and Technology Building. We're filming today, Commissioner, in the Ad Admissions Center. It's right. my understanding that people can already come to the, the school and visit and, and go on tours and learn about the campus here? And that's so. Uh, uh, in my understanding, also they uh, they actually have to schedule it to to get on the site because it's still a construction site. Uh, so please sure. do not just flock out <laughs> here, believe, thinking that you're going to be uh, able to drive through and, and take a look at everything. You'll have to schedule a, a tour, and and uh, it's uh, but it, it's going to be uh, very worthwhile if if uh, people want to do that and if they uh, want to to bring their children out and uh, take a look at it, and especially those. Uh, there's um, high school age kids that are going to be juniors and seniors next year uh, and this uh, offers them an opportunity to stay at home if this is what they're interested in as far as a field of study. The beautiful Ava Parker has done a wonderful job overseeing the infancy of Florida Poly and now the university has its first president. This is an exciting development. You know anything about the, the, the first president? Uh, only what I've read, uh, and, uh, and it uh, appears as though the, the uh, background, I haven't had an opportunity to meet him uh, personally, but it appears as though the background is a perfect fit uh, for what is going on here. Ava has been able to take this uh, from its infancy uh, to where it is now, and. Uh, Gosh, I, I can't say enough good things about her. She has just r really um, uh, took this project on and made it work and made it happen. And, and there's a lot of coordination, a lot of good people that have surrounded her. And she was able to make some good selections in those people. So it's, You know, of course, good. we're speaking of Randy K. Avent, who's been chosen by the board in April to be the university's first president. Um, 
Dr. Avent is an accomplished academic leader who served as mm -hmm. the Associate Vice Chancellor of Research and Development at North Carolina State University, where he was a professor of computer science and a founding director of the university's Data Center Institute. So we have Ava, now we have Dr. Avent coming in, so uh, a good team. Uh, you know, the, this, this campus is going to have far-reaching impacts, but immediately, I believe, Lakeland and Auburndale are going to be beneficiaries. Do you see that, that happening? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, uh, University Boulevard uh, ties yeah. in. Uh, it turns into Pace Road on the east end, and that is, uh, uh, intersects with Berkeley Road, which is the Auburndale area. And then on the west end, it, uh, it ties in um, at uh, 33, uh, which is the Lakeland end. Uh, uh, Ruthven's uh, Commercial Park is right uh, on the west end. Uh, Lake Myrtle uh, Sports Complex sure. uh, and Sports Marketing and, uh, is on the uh, east end. Uh, so I think that uh, with everything that's going on and with the, with the uh, Sports uh, marketing and the uh, and the Lake Myrtle complex uh, on uh, the East End with all of the stuff that they bring in and people from all over the world, not just from the United States, but all over the world. And while they're here, once this campus opens, I can't help but think that it's going to be an attraction that they're going to want to see. Yes, and sir. while they're here and uh, taking part in the sporting events, they're going to drive through. And uh, we're going to get some people from around the world, not just around the nation. Now, be before we close today, you have something special you wanted to show our viewers? Oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, if we haven't answered your questions uh, about uh, Florida Poly, pick up the current copy of Florida Trend Magazine. There's an excellent article in there. And uh, it goes into great detail on uh, the uh, university in its infancy and, and where it's uh, come to now and all the people that have been instrumental in getting it to where we are now. So just pick up a copy of Florida Trend. Oh, thank you. And uh, as, as we wrap up here, Commissioner Hall, I, I understand that the university may be working with the city of Lakeland on 14 acres that are behind the police station. There's a couple development ideas going on there. And the university is interested in maybe helping to populate uh, downtown Lakeland area. Well, uh, again, mm -hmm. it's going to have far reaching effects. It's not going to just stay on this campus. And uh, I, this is just one of the uh, ideas that are, that are coming out, an early idea. Uh, there's other things that are going to be happening around Florida Poly. Uh, couldn't be more pleased to have it here. Uh, but I want to state again before we, before we go off camera that yes, for the people that think that uh, government dollars have come in just for a university, it's come in, uh, we've, we've built the infrastructure, it's going to be for the private sector also, and, and development of, uh, of jobs, and that's why uh, government dollars have been spent uh, here. And again, maybe we'll keep our, our young bright minds at home. So important, and thank you, Commissioner John Hall, for being on the yes. program today and for sharing uh, about the vital and interesting um, new programs that are coming to uh, Lakeland and Polk County and Auburndale through Florida Polytechnic University. Thanks for having me. Please stay tuned as we'll soon be joined by Polk County property appraiser, Marsha Fox. What's in a number? Take the number 65. That's how many members were in the House of Representatives in the very first Congress and each of those 65 was responsible to only 30,000 voters back home. Today, the House of Representatives is made up of 435 members, each of whom has to represent the interests of more than 650,000 people. That means that today's members of Congress have to work much harder to reach their constituents. Of course, when there's so many of us, it's difficult for them to hear what we have to say. That makes citizen participation all the more important. One way to make sure you're heard is to join a group that shares a common interest or goal. That way, many voices become one, and that is hard to ignore. 
Welcome back to this special edition of the Commissioner's Report at Florida Polytechnic University, where we are now joined by Polk County property appraiser, Marsha Fox. Welcome to the program, Marsha. Good morning, DG, and thank you. I'm here this morning on this beautiful campus, and I'm very excited to be here. Well, thanks, thank you again. You know, we're very honored to have a public official with such deep roots in our community and who has such a tremendous love of Polk County. Could you please uh, give our viewers a little background on your upbringing? Sure, well, I've actually lived on the same piece of property. Um, this year will be 59 years. Wow. So it's sort of like the family compound. Um, my grandparents, I'm fifth generation um, from Polk County, I'm born and raised in South Lakeland in the community called Medela. So I went to Medela Elementary, Southwest Junior High, Kathleen Senior High School, Florida Southern College sort of my background and um, I've uh, been very excited to be part of um, agricultural community as my grandfather did we had citrus and strawberries and all sorts of things on in South Lakeland yes ma'am you know my favorite company in the world is public supermarkets and I understand that company special to you as yes. well yes it is Publix is very special to me I worked there for 21 plus years um, actually, at high school at Kathleen Senior High, in my senior year, I worked as a CBE student, which was corporate business education, and Publix hired me part-time. Well, after graduation, I went full-time with Publix and then spent many, many years, as I said, 21 years there. Um, Barney Barnett, I worked for Barney about the last five or six years, and Ernestine Ty. Um, Barney was my mentor, oh. and he sort of got me um, taking over his part of his job position for Publix, which was the ad valorem taxation in the state of Florida, is part of the reason why I'm here today as the Polk County property appraiser. A special, special man, Barney Barnett, special company, um, Publix. So what happened after Publix? Well, I... Um, Mr. Coleman, Ed Coleman was the property appraiser at the time back in 1992 and his director of tangible personal property, J.T. Jordan, was retiring. So they came to me at Publix and wanted to talk to me one day um, and I thought they were coming to talk about ad valorem taxation but it ended up being uh, we would like for you to come, J.T.'s going to retire and take over our tangible personal property department. And uh, that, so I left Publix and retired after 21 plus years in 1992. And then, um, you know, I've been in the property appraiser's office now almost 23 years. Congratulations. And then um, I became Ed Coleman's chief deputy in 98, and he announced he was going to retire in 99. So I decided to run for property appraiser. In 2000, I was on the, um, I believe it was the September ballot and was successful, so I was sworn in for my first time in January 2001. Oh, very good. Well, thank you very much for that enlightening background, but let's switch gears and talk about your office, okay? okay. You have how many folks and how many offices in Polk County? Okay, well, currently today we have 102 employees and we are in three office locations. Our main office is in Bartow, and then we have our office at the uh, Gil Jones Plaza, um, in Winter Haven, yes, and we have an office in Lakeland in the Government Center, um, and we've got 102 employees spread mm -hmm. um, between those three offices. We um, at one time had 114 employees, and of course with the down in the market, and we all had budget cuts and had to work um, more efficiently with less, mm -hmm. we, are, we are now at 102 employees. You know, speaking of efficiency, you know, you are like the, the county government and your colleagues as constitutional mm -hmm. officers. You all strive to be as efficient and lean as possible. Technology helps you in that regard, does it not? Oh, oh absolutely, yeah. technology is. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do, you know, that's how you get your leaner dollars is you, you have to move forward with technology because you can do, one person can do so much more uh, like our field appraisers, we have laptops with a condensed version of our entire tax roll on there. And we have special programs that they can run tied with our GIS, which is our geographic information system. And they can run queries when they're in neighborhoods and see everything that comes up on that report highlighted of exactly what they need to do while they're in there whether it's a new construction or a property that needs to be visited within the five-year time frame, 
or an addition to something or somebody's adding a pool to a home that's already been there. And they can take photos and upload all of their information right there on the laptop into that, which makes it, you know, the less people that handle it, the less errors that you make. And so that has helped us tremendously to get further, more accurate, you know, more information, uh, better information into our system. You know, you mentioned your three offices, but can't people today do a lot just on your website? Oh, absolutely, okay. yeah. We, ev everything that we have is, on, is available on our website. We're very proud of our website. Um, we're known in the state of Florida for being one of the mm -hmm. top property appraisers offices, much less our website. We um, have filing online for tangible personal property tax returns, which our businesses have to complete every year by April. And then last January, we rolled out our newest um, application, which is filing for homestead exemption online, okay, very good. so that you don't have to come into our office. And along with that homestead, you can file your widows, widowers, your veterans, disability, any exemption that's available you can file through our website. And I'm pretty sure that still today, we are the only property appraiser's office that you can do all of those applications in one step. So we're very proud of that. And um, you know, we've had like over five or 6,000 homesteads filed on that this year. And it's very quick and easy and um, you can upload your documents and we're very proud of that. And you had mentioned the GIS. Now you're gonna be rolling out what, some new aerials and something called pictometry. Mm -hmm. What is that mm -hmm. all about? Well, we had um, a kind of a contract with Southwest Florida Water Management District where they would fly half of the county and we would contract to fly half the county for aerial photography. And we're required to have that every two years. So right now, currently, 2011 is our most recent set of aerials. But they lost in funding of budget money. And so we had to go out and research and do a state bid to find someone to come and do our aerials. So in that, we um, did a contract with pictometry to get the um, digital ortho um, aerials and pictometry at the same time. So that will be available, the new aerials on our website, about the, well, let's say by the 1st of November, I believe is what our goal is. And pictometry means you can walk around and a building and see all mm -hmm. sides of a yep, building? The pictometry is going to be four sides of the building, okay. like a 360 cool. where you can just sort of search and go, go around the building, which will help us um, with some inspections because um, you know, to do 357,000 properties once every five years is a huge challenge. And uh, so the pictometry will allow us um, to do that. You can use the aerial photography now um, through the Florida statutes to do the inspections. You know, our county's bigger than Rhode Island, very it complex. Is. Tell us about your market areas. Don't you have like over a thousand? In order to get our um, values, equitable values on the tax roll, we have the county divided in about 1,100 something market areas. Okay. And, and to describe that, it would be um, a homogeneous market area, like um, South Lakeland around Scott Lake would be a market area. And that area is different than Point Siena or Lake mm -hmm. Ashton. Um, Mulberry is different than downtown Lake Wales. So those 1,100 market areas, we study um, cost market and sales, all the sales in those areas to determine what market value is for all of our classes of properties. You know, we have single family residential, we have condos, we have mobile homes, we have commercial properties, we have industrial properties, and then we have vacant land that goes with all of those. So um, it's a huge project, but we have over 1,100 market areas. So we can zero in exactly on that homogeneous area to determine what market value is. How are, when you look at a business, like mm -hmm. one of the Ruthven's warehouses, or one of our manufacturing companies, or electric power generating facility, you know, how is that different? How do you look at that and, and determine what value that is? Well, the statutes require us to use the three approaches to value, which is cost, okay. market, which is your sales, and income, if it's an income producing property. A lot of times, um, you, you mentioned the Ruthmans, and if they okay. had like a strip center or a warehouse strip center where they were leasing to tenants, well, we would try to get with them and figure out what their uh, income and expense is to provide us with that. And we would look at those as an income and expense to if we had market sales 
that represented any of that type commercial warehouse leasing. Um, typically, cost um, would not necessarily be a factor because it's, it's highest and best use at what a property would bring. So the income and the sales are the best way to measure um, what those industrial strip centers would be along with um, a condominium complexes, apartment complexes, mm. shopping centers are some of the different types that we use an income approach on. I tell you, it's a big job. It's, it is a big job. <laughs> uh, you know, in the fall of 2012, the voters in Polk County passed a, rent, a referendum for ad valorem tax relief for certain economic development projects. This could be for an existing company that's expanding or a new company coming into our community. I understand your office is involved in this process. What do you all do? Yes, I am. Thank you, DG. <laughs> <laughs> I work very closely with DG on mm -hmm, this project. Mm -hmm. um, right. Well, we, mm -hmm. we have, um, have uh, several now that we have in the works. Um, none of them have actually come to the uh, abatement of actually taxes being given back to them, but mm -hmm. that should happen this year in 2014. Um, they send me all the specs on the new project that's been done by um, the economic development and then we have a form that you provide to me or the company does and we look at, um, they give an estimation of what their building will cost because land is not part of this. Yes, ma'am. And then they list all of the tangible personal property which is the equipment, furniture, fixtures and equipment that it would take to run this business and it's on, and on estimation. So we take our depreciation tables and our index tables and come up with an estimated amount of value for those two. And then we go down through your form and we estimate how much those tax dollars would be on whatever the current millage rates are. Mm -hmm. And I sign off on that and put that, um, complete that form and date it and sign it. And then typically we do this by email. So we send it back to DG and whoever else is copied. and, mm -hmm. and uh, and then they go through and you take that to the board and it gets reviewed and gets approved. So it's a very interesting process, but it's exciting to see the new businesses and the jobs that they're going to provide um, to Polk County residents in the, in the next few years. Well, thank you so much. And you do perform such a valuable service and I know you're very hands-on in your work. Yes, I am uh, very hands-on. If someone were to come in and walk up to the desk, say, I want to see Marsha, do they get to see Marsha? Yes, they do, Marcia yes, <laughs> unless, unless I'm like today, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm yeah. off-site somewhere, yeah. or um, I do have a lot of speakings where I speak at lunch at Rotary and Kiwanis, and I'm trying to commun communicate with um, the taxpayers in Polk County and the citizens about what we, what we really do and that we really are here to try to help and make sure that you have everything possibly that you could have um, with your property and then, it, and then it's accurate. We are so blessed to have you as Thank our you. property well, appraiser. In, I'm, in Polk I'm County. very proud to be the property appraiser of Polk County. Um, you know, after 59 years almost of living on the mm -hmm. same piece of property, mm -hmm. I've never lived anywhere else. Um, I have a lot of pride in uh, representing Polk County and the, and the citizens and residents. So I thank you for that support. Well, and thank you for being on the program today. Thank you. Um, this is your host, Jim DeGennaro, reminding you to tune in next month where we'll have two county commissioners talk about the programs and the policies that are important to Polk County residents. Until then, please take care and enjoy this beautiful community we call home.